Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be testing out some PS2 games on the Nvidia Shield Pro using Ether SX2. Recently on the channel, I did an updated video on the Nvidia Shield in 2022 to see if it was worth picking one up or not. And in that video, we kind of concluded that, yeah, we still got some really good GPU performance, but when you compare the CPU performance out of the Tegra X1 to even mid-range chips, like the Snapdragon 730, it is lacking on the CPU side of things. But I still wanted to get this out of the way because this was one of the biggest questions I got from that video. Since we have a new, really awesome PS2 emulator for Android, I figured we'd see if it would even run on the Nvidia Shield. So in this video, we're going to be testing out a few games, and unfortunately I couldn't get this from Google Play on the Shield itself, so I had to sideload it. I just transferred it over USB. And by the way, I'm using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth, and all of my games are on an external SSD. You know, these PS2 games are quite large, and we only have 16 gigabytes of internal storage on this unit. So first up, let's go with something easier to emulate. We'll do Marvel vs. Capcom 2, but keep in mind, if you do really want to run this game with an upscaled resolution, you can always use the Dreamcast version. But since we have access to this PS2 emulator, I figured we'd test out the PS2 version and see what happens here. So let me go ahead and get into some gameplay, and I'm going to move my camera a bit closer to the display. So one thing I've noticed recently with the Shield, at least with most of the emulators that I've tested, I'm seeing much better performance with OpenGL versus Vulkan. And don't get me wrong, the Tegra X1 does have some really good Vulkan performance, especially when running some Vulkan benchmarks, but for some reason I'm just getting much better performance with OpenGL. So that's what we're running here with Ether SX2. I'm going to test a few different combinations with different games to see what runs better, but overall this one here seems to be very playable. And going into it, I kind of suspected it would be. It's not the hardest one to emulate. So we're going to back out of here, I'll exit this game, and then we're going to start up a 3D PS2 game. We'll go with, um, let's do Crash Bandicoot The Wrath of Cortex. Again, not a super hard one to emulate for PS2 emulators. If you've messed around with Ether SX2, once you start this up, you can choose Unsafe Mode or Safe Mode. Safe Mode is going to be more accurate emulation. And right now, this is in Safe Mode. I don't have any underclocking, overclocking, or anything like that going on with the emulator itself but I am using the Vulcan back in. I'm going to swap over to OpenGL real quick and just see if that helps out. Because we're definitely not at full speed with this yet. And with OpenGL, it looks about the same. We just can't hit that 60 in safe mode. So we will have to put on a few different hacks. And I've tried a bunch of different settings so far, and this is about the best I can get it running. OpenGL backend, 1x resolution, and EE cycle skip set to 2. It's not going to run at 60, but it's much more playable than in safe mode. But, uh, you know, we are skipping some frames here. Overall, it's actually really not that bad. But, we are running some hacks in the background, and it looks like most of these 3D games will require some hacks with the Nvidia Shield. So let's move over to a couple more games and see what happens. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 is actually working pretty decently with uh, OpenGL back in and Cycle Skip set to 2. Here's Automotalista, and this was actually pretty impressive seeing it running this well. It's still not perfect, but uh, it's definitely working a lot better than the GameCube version on the Nvidia Shield. I was really hoping to get Gran Turismo 4 working, but unfortunately, no matter what I do, no matter what settings I use, it always freezes up right here. Now, I don't think the game is froze, I just think it's taking forever to load, because even just picking the color of the car took about two minutes. Ratchet & Clank is another one of those games that's kind of a no-go. A uh, bunch of hacks going on, I've tried it with no hacks, and it's just very slow to run on the Nvidia Shield. 
Moving over to another 2D fighting game, we have Capcom vs. SNK2, and seeing how well Marvel vs. Capcom ran, I figured that this would also run pretty well. So with Simpsons Hit and Run, I thought going into this that we'd get some really good performance, but unfortunately I did have to turn it to unsafe mode, got a lot of cycle skips going on here, and it's just not really that playable. I got a couple more that I wanted to test, so I'm just going to kind of let these play out. Here we have Kingdom Hearts 2, and it looks like a lot of these 3D games are going to work much better with the cycle skip set to 2 or 3, but 3 is a bit extreme. So going into this, you probably want to set this to unsafe mode, but I would not recommend buying the Nvidia Shield specifically for PS2 emulation. So unfortunately, the Nvidia Shield just really isn't cut out for PS2 emulation, and it really comes down to the CPU performance of this Tegra X1 chip. I do believe, especially with the OpenGL backend, we have enough GPU in this, but uh, when it comes to CPU performance, this chip is getting a bit dated. And I will admit, it's been on the market for a very long time, and it's doing much better than I thought it would, given its age. If you were to take an Android phone that came out the same year as the original NVIDIA Shield and tried to run this PS2 emulator on it, it might not even boot up. There are some phones out there that might perform pretty decently, but for its age, I think the chip did a pretty decent job. But it's just not something you go out and buy in 2022 specifically for PS2 emulation. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. I had a lot of viewers asking about Ether SX2 on the NVIDIA Shield, so I figured I'd go ahead and make a quick video on it. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this unit, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.